Today I would like to talk to you about the fourth industrial revolution. And before I talk about the fourth industrial revolution, I just need to talk about uh, the history of industrialization. It started with the first industrial revolution, uh, which was uh, which was uh, given from the fact that uh, we could understand science much much better. We could understand movement of things much much better. And that catalyst uh, uh, gave us things like uh, trains, steam engines, and so on and so forth. And from that point, we were able to make things using machines. Then the second industrial revolution came as a result of the discovery of two things, electricity and electric motor. Now with electric motor, you are able to move things much, much, much uh, more effectively. And as a result of that, we had uh, um, the assembly line that gave us mass production of, of, of goods and services. Then the third industrial revolution, whose uh, uh, catalyst was, uh, was the semiconductor devices and transistor, gave us the electronic age. You know, the electronic age, uh, computers uh, was the product of the electronic age. And from that point, we were automating our industries. Now we are at the fourth industrial revolution where that automation now is going to be much more intelligent. And because of that intelligence into production, it means fewer and fewer people are going to be at work. And what will be the consequences of that? Because fewer and fewer people are going to be needed to produce goods and services, and then those who own capital, or who have means uh, of, of, of acquiring capital, uh, infrastructure, and so on and so forth. These robots that are going to come as a result of the fourth industrial revolution, then they are going to become wealthier, and those who are out of, of, of their jobs are going to become poorer and poorer, and therefore inequality is going to increase. Uh, in fact, uh, it is not just the workforce that is going to be impacted. We as educators will have to think about uh, the skills that we need to give to our students. What do we teach our students for them to be ready for the fourth industrial revolution? Because many of the jobs that require people to master tasks, for example, uh, the you know the, the making of a car where somebody will we will stand in, in an assembly line to inspect whether you know, whether the car is of good quality or not, will not be necessary because uh, cameras and computers will be able to do that. Intelligent uh, software in a computer will look at an image from a, from a camera of a car and then decide whether that car is of good quality or not. So the jobs that are actually going to remain uh, would be the jobs that require human interaction. For example, even a, a job as simple as being a doctor. Somebody comes to you, you send him, you are a doctor, you send him to get an x-ray, and then you look at the x-ray image, and then you decide whether the person has a, a pulmonary embolism or not, for example. Uh, such tasks can be done by a computer now. In fact, we have software that will look at the, the picture of a lung from an x-ray image and be able to tell, without any human intervention at all, whether the person has a pulmonary embolism or not, or uh, 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 whether somebody has, uh, uh, is going to experience epilepsy uh, uh, or not. So, uh, so many jobs will obviously have to, uh, ha have to be replaced by, by machines, intelligent machines, but those jobs that have huge uh, human interaction uh, requirements, uh, will survive. You know, for example, if somebody has very serious diseases and then they have just been diagnosed, probably a human being should tell them on the computer. You know, because you, you, the, the, the patient probably needs empathy and so on and so forth. So those are the times in which we are going to, uh, uh, to live. So as educators, what do we do? We are supposed to educate people who understand human interaction. Whether they're engineers, they have to understand the human aspect. 
because that engineer when he designs that robot uh, will have to design into it things like ethics which are ne not necessarily the domain of, of engineers things like emotions which are not necessarily uh, uh, things of, of engineers uh, so that uh, that robot can be able to deal with a human being when it interacts with a human being thank you very much <laughs>